We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for March 3rd, 2013. And today we're going to be doing, I guess you call it a dedicated study, on, um, kind of started this a couple weeks ago where we had talked about the whole Petrus Romanus thing, uh, Tom Horn, uh, this whole last Pope deal, St. Malcolm prophecy, all that. And I went through and tried to give a balanced biblical perspective on what was being talked about. And always coming back to the conclusion of why do we have to have all of these Catholic prophecies and supposed deceased Catholic saints and theologians, why do we have to have all of that information in order to guide us to the truth regarding the end times. And wanted just to give a try to give a balanced biblical approach. I'm going to do the same thing today with the Exo Vaticana reports that are online uh, at Raiders News Network with uh, Tom Horn. I'm going to go going be going through parts one through six. This is not a review of the book. It's a review of the reports that are online. Now, there's a lot in those reports that I think are really good as far as information we can glean from. It's just, again, the whole emphasis on the Catholic stuff. The Exo Vaticana, at least the, these reports I'm talking about today, some of it is, is, is going to have to do with the Catholic Church. Um, a lot of it, though, is regarding the coming agenda really of the Antichrist and false prophet. How this is all going to go down, what we should be expecting in the future. A lot of it lines up with what I've been teaching for a long time. And um, we're going to be looking at parts 1 through 6 today. Very interesting information. Very, very, very interesting. But again, I want to also be there to try to give us, okay, let's not (laughs) get too far off on the whole focusing on the Catholic thing. Because I don't believe that's necessary. Now, recently, they put up a video regarding, I think, promoting this Exo Vaticana book. And I'm just going to go ahead and play this video. It's about a few minutes long. Yeah, it's three minutes long, exactly. And kind of give a critique of that, and then we'll go further into the study. So, the video starts out saying, Apollo 16 films UFO over the moon. And you see... Apollo 16, you see a, a UFO over the moon. It's, it's a real shot. Uh, it was miles wide, pulsating UFO by NASA. You're seeing it right here on the camera. It's showing it to you. Uh, over Washington, D.C. in 1952, a fleet of UFOs. This is actual footage. Over Bulgaria. <clears throat> These look like legit UFO footage sightings. I, I would have... You know, there's thousands of these things per year. These are just some of the more, more noteworthy. Um, UFO fleet over Pennsylvania. Observing our missile test. There's an actual UFO right by a missile that's being launched, and it's just right there in the sky hovering. It's not a helicopter. And then it goes to September. I'm here with my good friend Chris Putnam. Okay, now this is when him, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam go to this observatory at Mount Graham, which is what we're going to be talking about in the first part of this, and they are granted this access to this Lucifer telescope, this Catholic, uh, Jesuit Lucifer telescope on the top of Mount Graham, and again, this is what we're going to be talking about here. We are at the base of Mount Graham, and we are on our way to the Vatican's Astronomical Technology Telescope. Now, there's all kind of security. You have to have all kind of clearance to even get to this place. You you just can't drive up there and do what they're doing. They had special access to this thing. And it's, again, 100% Vatican-endorsed, Catholic, Jesuit. We're talking, you know, the worst factions of the Catholic Church control this thing. Shows them getting in the elevator. So it says, Investigators Tom Horn and Chris Putnam meet with the astronomers, technicians, and a Jesuit. Okay, and again, the Jesuits are the worst 
cutthroat, evil faction of the Catholic Church, by far. Shows them in there. They were given access to the Vatican's astronomical telescope and control rooms. Oh, so we just received secret information. information. So the Lucifer instrument is actually an instrument they use to gather infrared light. It is the largest telescope in the world. So, they've got this telescope there at Mount Graham at this Catholic Jesuit observatory, and they named the telescope Lucifer. I mean, you know, it's unbelievable. And then it goes on to say what they learned about the Lucifer device was unexpected. They're using this primarily in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We're going to talk very specifically about this Lucifer device, why it's different than almost any other telescope on the planet, and why it can pick up things that other telescopes cannot pick up. And that is a fact, but we're going to get into that a little later. It says it doesn't matter what you believe, what the Vatican is preparing for is about to change everything. See, the Vatican knows things that the general public doesn't know. And this is what we're going to be getting into today. That just showed a two, two, it looked like almost two jet fighters escorting a UFO. The, the, the footage most likely is legitimate. So again, it's, it's to promote their book, Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus Project Lucifer, and the Vatican's Astonishing Plan for the Arrival of an Alien Savior. Okay, So, I'm here to try to cut through a lot of this, so, you know, uh, hopefully we can make biblical, balanced biblical sense out of this whole subject. And again, I have reported on this particular subject many, many times, just not quite from this angle. So, if we go to, he's got like 18 parts online right now, for this exo-Vaticana thing. We go to part one. This is what we're going to be looking at first, part one. We're going to go through six parts today and see how far we can get. Um, It starts out by saying, such technical language aside, the observers who are are approved to operate the VAT, this is the, um, the telescopes there at Mount Graham, and what they're using it for these days is what would take us through the looking glass, which, again, that's a... Obviously, a, a veiled reference to Alice in Wonderland, which is a mind control movie. This was confirmed minutes later by the Jesuit father on duty. I mean, they've got Jesuits manning this thing. So you know this is the most, you know, evil faction of the Catholic uh, cult, death cult. And here they've got Jesuits up there manning these very telescopes. You know, Lucifer. It's pretty appropriate. So anyway... This was confirmed minutes later by the Jesuit father on duty that day, whom we got on film, who told us that among the most important research occurring with the site's Vatican astronomers is the quest to pinpoint certain extrasolar planets and advanced alien intelligence. Now, they were very open about this. Okay, While we were given complete and unrestricted opportunity to question how the devices are used and what distinctives set each of the telescopes on Mount Graham apart, we are not expected we had not expected the ease which with which the astronomers and technicians would also speak of the UFOs. Now again, you, the, it begs the question, how on God's green earth did they get this type of access to a top secret um, telescope? an observatory manned by Jesuits. How did they get this kind of unlimited, unfettered access? You know, unless they've got, obviously, Catholic connections. Well, you could go up on the website many times, and you go up there, like I was up there a couple days ago, 
And I mean, it's just one Catholic article after another Catholic article. Yes, granted, it's about the whole Petrus Romanus and how, you know, this or that. And But it's like, there's very, many, many times you would go up there and there's absolutely zero up there that would offend a open-minded Catholic at all. I mean, almost zero. They're so fixated on... So, again, they have this unfettered access. It's very unusual and strange. I guarantee you one thing. They're not going to grant me that (laughs) if I try to get it, okay? So, in other words, they've got connections, and that in and of itself is um, very fishy, obviously. So... Going further, this was especially true when we walked up the gravel road from the VAT to the large binocular telescope, where we spent most of the day with a systems engineer who not only took us to all seven levels of that mighty machine, pointing out the Lucifer device and what it was used for, which he lovingly referred to as Lucy. Several tries... um, He referred to as Lucy several times and elsewhere as Lucifer, as well as every other aspect of the telescope we try to wrap our minds around. Now, obviously, um, not obviously, but if you don't know, Lucifer was the original name of Satan. Lucifer, the name means light bearer, okay? And um, it was what Satan's name was before he fell. So anyway, so going further, as well as every other aspect of the telescope we try to wrap our minds around. But who also stunned us as we sat in the control room listening to him and the astronomers speak so casually of the redundancy with UFOs are captured on screens darting through the heavens. In other words, they're capturing UFOs all the time on these things. Okay? And particularly in, like, this Lucifer device where it's picking up and able to film infrared and wavelengths that you cannot capture on a normal telescope. So they're able to capture a lot more of these UFOs. <clears throat> Going further, it says, Our friendly engineer didn't blink an eye, nor did any of the other scientists in the room. And we were shocked at this, how ordinary it seemed to be, and meaning capturing all these UFOs all the time. <clears throat> but as much as the commonality of the UFO sightings on Mount Graham's telescopes intrigued us, this was not the primary reason for us being there. We had come with deeper questions concerning high-level Vatican astronomers and what they had been leaking to and discussing with the media in recent years. See, the, Va- the Vatican and the Catholic Church has been prepping and preparing humanity, particularly their, their little cult following, not little, but gigantic cult following of the Catholic Church, for this event that's coming. And they've been doing this, and I have done... Several studies where I talked about this. Uh, one was entitled, I think, like Vatican preparing for, you know, um, coming alien disclosure. And there's been a ton of this talked about. I've done many, many teachings on this. Um, if you just can, probably Vatican or Catholic or whatever uh, alien in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com, you'll find those, those teachings. So this is something I've also reported on many times. Uh, Going further, captivating comments from Jesuit priest Guy Consalamangio, (laughs) guy's got a really long name, who was a leading astronomer who often turns up in the media as a spokesman for the Vatican, who has also worked at NASA and taught at Harvard and MIT, and who currently splits his time between Vatican Observatory and the laboratory uh, Spectola Vaticana, headquartered at the summer residence of the Pope in Castile, Gandolfo, Italy, and Mount Graham in Arizona. Because this guy's got, in other words, he's got the highest clearance access of probably any of the Vatican astronomers. Over the last few years, he has focused so much of his time and effort in an attempt to reconcile science and religion in the public forums specifically as it relates to the subject of extraterrestrial life and its potential impact on the future of faith. See, that's what this is all about. That's what this study I'm doing today is all about. How is it going to impact the future of faith on this planet? Now, granted, the only true faith is Bible-believing Christianity. Okay, All of the other faiths are pretenders. But it's going to impact them as well. Because remember, in order to have a one world religion under the Antichrist and false prophet, they have to have a common faith. Now, 
it's most likely going to be an amalgamation of all false religions on the planet combined into one. With a, as I've said before, with its backbone is witchcraft, New Age, high level, Luciferian witchcraft. But its saviors, this type of thing with the Antichrist and false prophet, most likely that whole savior aspect is going to be largely um, hinged on the whole UFO, ascended master, savior of mankind type of deal. And this is what we're, we're looking at today. So, let me just read the last sentence again. As it relates to the subject of extraterrestrial life and, and its potential impact on the future of faith, that we decided to contact him. That's why they decided. He agreed to be interviewed in Rome, this, this guy, uh, dude. And over numerous exchanges that followed, he told us some things that seemed beyond the scope. He even sent us a private PDF Again, they've got all this favor with these high-level Catholic Jesuit dudes. You know, it's just very, very fishy. But um, he sent us a copy of the private PDF, a literal goldmine of what he and the Vatican are considering regarding the ramifications of astrobiology and specifically the, the discovery of advanced extraterrestrials in which he admits how contemporary societies will soon Look to the aliens to be the saviors of humankind. That was a quote. Humanity in general is going to look to the, these aliens to be the saviors of humankind. Christians will not... Again, and this is that quote that I read before. Vatican astronomer... Who said this? A Vatican astronomer, eminent theologian, and full professor of fundamental theology in Rome, connected with Opus Dei, Father Giuseppe Tanzelli, Nitti. He said, quote, Christians will not immediately need to renounce their faith in God, simply on the basis of the reception of this new, unexpected information of a religious character from extraterrestrial civilizations. However, once the religious content originating from outside the earth, meaning from these aliens, once that has been verified, they will have to conduct a re-reading of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, inclusive of the new data. You understand, this is how all cults get started. What do you mean? Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, King James Bible. Those are the three supposed holy books of the Mormon religion. What always ends up taking precedence over the Bible? And they even use a King James Bible in the Mormon religion. At least they used to. I'm, I'm assuming they still do. What always ends up taking precedence, though, when you have some new cult starting up? extra-biblical information, in this case the Book of Mormon, which is a book of lies, and the Pearl of Great Price, another book of lies. Jehovah Witnesses, it's the same way. They're supposed prophets and prophetic writings, which supposedly stand alongside, of course they use what they call the New World Translation, which is a perversion. And then their magazine, The Watchtower, which is supposedly angelically inspired, but unfortunately it's predicted the end of the earth so many, wrong so many times that they had to kind of just you know, backpedal and stop doing that because, you know, they kept getting these prophecies wrong, these devils that inspired this writing. These are the things whenever you have a cult. Seventh day Adventists, the same thing. Ellen White, the, the cult the the um, cult leader that started the Seventh day Adventists. And it is a cult. I don't care what anybody says. It is. I mean I can prove it. Look who started it. The woman was basically a witch. A nutbag. All kind of documentation about her. A evil, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You All you have to do is look at the start of how something formed to know if it is corrupt or uncorrupt. All of these cults that have gotten started always had a very terrible beginning. A corrupted, a leavened beginning. Jesus Christ said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, which is their doctrine. The doctrine is what gets you. Because whatever doctrine you're following and putting your faith in, 
Well, if that doctrine is contrary to the word of God, then it's going to take you to hell. So they're saying this this Vatican astronomer, Father Giuseppe Tenzelli, Nitti, says that once this information from this extraterrestrial civilization has been verified, they will have to conduct a rereading of the gospel. Why doesn't it say a rereading of the Bhagavad Gita or a rereading of the Zoroastrian religion or whatever unholy book they're following? The Talmud or the Kabbalah. Why is it that the only thing that really seems to matter to these aliens, these ascended masters, these and again they've they've countless people have been abducted, turned up, they're all being brainwashed with the same garbage. We're your creators. You're a little science project. We created you millions of years ago. We seeded this planet with humanity. You, you've messed things up so bad that we're going to have to come back pretty soon and, and you know help out our little science project. It's called the ancient astronaut theory. It's what intelligent design is based on. Not the Bible. And I've done a whole teaching on that. Just key in intelligent in the keyword search box on the website and you'll find it. Why is it that these devils always seem to only care about one thing, the gospel. Because that's the very thing that gets you into heaven. It's the only way. There's only one door, Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's it. There's no other, there's no other way. Okay? There's no other way whereby man must be saved. Period. That's it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If they can conduct a rereading of the gospel, bringing the gospel into total question, what they're going to do, and I've said this before, they're not only going to question the gospel, they're going to say it's been perverted, you've messed it all up, this wasn't even the message Jesus Christ brought, but because the Bible's so old, man has got in there and perverted the message. And you know what, guys? We're going to do you one better. When we make our big debut, we're going to show you a little video of what actually really happened at the cross. We're going to show you that Jesus Christ actually was never really crucified. And who knows what kind of theory, wild theory, they're going to put out. I don't know if it's going to be like with uh, the Holy Blood, Holy Grail thing, uh, the whole uh, uh, Da Vinci Code, this whole thing that I've reported on many, many times where he actually married, Jesus Christ was like whisked off the cross and married Mary Magdalene and she had his children and this is where the Merovingian bloodline came. I don't exactly know. They're going to portray Jesus as one of them. But a lesser one of them. He's just, he's one of the lesser lesser uh, saviors of humanity. A lesser ascended master. I saw he's always portrayed. In their, they've got their own, and guess what? He's going to look exactly like all those pictures that the Catholic Church gave us. Imagine that through Michelangelo, that real, that Adonis Jesus that you see hanging up in, like not just Catholic churches, but everywhere in a lot of people's homes. He's going to look just like that, and he's going to be the one in charge of united all the Christian denominations on planet Earth, and most likely will rule from Rome. That's the plan I've seen. Now, whether it goes down exactly like that, I don't know. But that's what the New Agers have been saying is going to happen. And this false Sananda Emmanuel, Master Jesus, which is how he refers to himself, Sananda Emmanuel or Master Jesus, or Esau Sananda Emmanuel, I've done many teachings on that as well, He's going to be the one in charge of uniting particularly all the Christian denominations on planet Earth. Ruling through the Catholic Church and then amalgamating all of the other literally thousands of denominations through lying signs and wonders and miracles and false doctrine under one banner. And then eventually that's going to be, all the religions are going to be amalgamated under one umbrella to have a one world religion of Antichrist and false prophet, which we know is going to happen. You can't say, oh, this is just wild speculation. We know we're going to have a one world religion under Antichrist. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's no debate. So how's it going to happen? What better way than that? 
The Muslims believe that Jesus, this false Jesus that I'm referring to, but well, they're going to refer to him, they believe that he's coming back with their awaited Savior. The Imam Mahdi. That's who their awaited Savior is. They believe Jesus is coming back with him. To kind of like point the way to him. Now, you think, and you think, well how on the world would, would the Muslims ever agree to get in on board with some type of one world religion? Because they're so dogmatic, I mean they're willing to just blow themselves up and launch themselves straight into hell. For the sake of Allah. Well, if you had a false Jesus and their awaited savior the Imam Mahdi, all telling them to do this, they're going to do what they're told. And if they come with all lying signs and wonders, you know, they're going to be bedazzled. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. That's what the Bible says. And they're going to follow, you know, the Antichrist. And they're not going to have a problem amalgamating with these other religions as long as they know Imam Mahdi and this false Master Jesus, who are referred to, they're not going to have a problem if they're pointing them to this. This is the way I see it playing out. Maybe it won't exactly go down that way, but I see it as a pretty good... I mean, if you were Satan, wouldn't that be a pretty smart game plan? You kind of look at it from his point of view. So, once the religious content originating from outside the earth has been verified, they will have to conduct a rereading of the gospel, inclusive of the new data. Inclusive of the new leaven is what it means. And this leaven is going to totally, just like a little yeast, will leaven a whole lump of bread. This new leaven is totally going to destroy the pure message of the word of God and the gospels. It's going to destroy that. It's going to leaven it. And you won't, if you believe this, you will not even be able to get saved. They're going to have to come out with, they'll come out with their own new Bible too. Inclusive of the new data. A soul damning Bible is what they're going to be coming out with. The Bibles are already so watered down now with all these new versions and perversions that, you know, they're moving in that direction anyway. Now, let's go then to part two of this report on this Exo Vaticana. I'm going I'm jumping now to the second part. I'm just hitting the high points in each part. I'm not going through every little piece of data. We'd be here for months if I was trying to do this. Um, so in our last entry, top Vatican astronomer, Guy C, I'm just going to call him Guy C, stated how contemporary societies may soon look to the aliens to be the saviors of humankind. To illustrate the theological soundness of this possibility, Guy C. argues that humans, that this is the top Vatican astronomer, that humans are not the only intelligent beings God created in the universe. This is a Vatican astronomer arguing this. The top. He says these non-human life forms are described in the Bible. He starts by pointing to angels and then surprises us by actually referring to the Nephilim. Okay, the, the word Nephilim is where is translated giants in Genesis 6. These are the, this is the unholy, ungodly, hybrid offspring between human women and fallen angels. They were giants. It also means fallen ones. So, he goes on, that uh, this astronomer says, Other heavenly beings come up several times in Psalms. For example, look at the beautiful passage in Psalm 89 that calls out, Quote, let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Likewise, God asks Job in 38.7 if any human can claim to have been around at the creation. When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. End of quote. Oh, well, actually not end of quote. He goes on to say, are these heavens, these holy ones, those in the sky and the morning stars and the heavenly beings... More references to angels? Or do they refer to some other kind of life beyond our knowledge? My comment. <laughs> no guy, sorry to burst your heretical bubble, but these verses are referring to holy angels, not space aliens. Okay? 
These are holy angels they're in reference to. Okay? In the Old Testament, if you do a keyword search for the sons of God, that's another one. And you go, first time it occurs is in Genesis 6. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They took them wives all that they chose. And then it goes on to say, in those days were giants. This was the, this was the um, unholy offspring. Holy angels, before they fall, are referred to as the sons of God in the Old Testament. Do a keyword search. Every single time that that phrase comes up in the Old Testament is clearly in reference to angels, good angels. When the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, that didn't make them fallen yet. When they fell is when they took them wise all that they chose. Then they were not referred to as the sons of God anymore. They would be referred to as fallen angels, essentially, at that point. Okay? So... These holy ones, these morning stars, the, which is also a clear reference to good angels, um, the the sons of uh, the sons of God in the Old Testament, the holy ones. These are all in reference to um, good angels, not space aliens. So again, this is so elementary. It's really pathetic. This guy can't figure this out. Because it's obviously in reference to good angels. But he wants to make this mental leap of logic and say, no, these probably refer to space aliens. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Bible's real clear on that. And then I think, and then he goes on to say, and these are not the only non-human intelligent creatures mentioned in the Bible. Uh, There's that odd and mysterious passage at the beginning of Genesis chapter 6 that describes the sons of God taking human wives with its frustratingly oblique reference to the Nephilim. It's not frustratingly oblique. It's very clear. There are many studies on this, what these are. Okay? Half human, half fallen angel. They manifest as giants in the Old Testament. They go and they defile the land. They devour humanity, essentially. They commit. They can only commit evil. They are pure evil. So he goes on to say, with this frustratingly oblique reference to the Nephilim, that the heroes that were of old, warriors of renown. But whether you interpret these creatures as angels or aliens doesn't really matter for the sake of the argument here. My comment, oh yes it does, as you are building an unbiblical theory based on total lies. How could you say it doesn't matter? Yes, it does matter. And then he goes on to say, the point is that the ancient writers of the Bible, like the ancient peoples, were perfectly happy with the possibility that other intelligent beings could exist. So, okay, now we have aliens. I've explained to you, and the Bible's very clear on what these terms meant. But, again, he's taking his mental leap of logic here and and assuming things that the Bible never says. And then he goes on to say, read that again and then ask yourself, did, no, now we're back to the main article. Read yourself that again and ask yourself, did the Vatican's top astronomer actually mean to use the story of the Nephilim from the Bible as an example of the kind of space saviors that man could soon look for to sal- for salvation? That's what he's implying. He's implying that the Nephilim, these other creatures of Genesis 6, hey, maybe that's where, where we need to look to for salvation possibly in the future. This incredible assertion is only taught by what he says next, in quoting from John 10.6, which says, and then he quoted from John 10.6, which says, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Again, my comment. This guy is so biblically illiterate, it's unbelievable. My comment, these other sheep, Jesus Christ referenced in John 10, 6, of this other fold, are a clear reference to the Gentiles who had not, when Jesus had spoken these words, been reached yet. Remember, he went to the Jews. He came to his own and his own received him not. Like it says in John 1, Jesus first went to the Jews. Okay? But... At some point, that emphasis went on to the Gentiles after Jesus was actually crucified. And you can find clear evidence of that in the New Testament. 
When Jesus uttered these words, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them, them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. These other sheep are a clear reference to the Gentiles, who had not, when Jesus spoke these words, been reached yet. With the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not aliens from other planets. This is what this guy, C, is saying, this top Vatican astronomer. He's saying this other sheep are in clear reference to the aliens. <laughs> well, other sheep with like two heads or something. <laughs> oh, my word. Jesus Christ came to planet Earth. His death, burial, and resurrection. His crucifixion on the cross. The shedding of the blood. Of his blood. To pay our sin debt. All of that happened for humanity's sake. It, he didn't come here to pay the price for space aliens. Or in this case, defiled Nephilim. Or for an animal-human hybrid. Or an alien-human hybrid. That disqualifies you. We're talking about sheep here. It says, an other sheep I have. It's the same. Notice, it's sheep. It's another group of humans, another herd, another flock of sheep, which are not of this fold, meaning not of this fold means they're not of the Jews. This was in clear reference to the Gentiles. If it was another race altogether, like aliens, like this Vatican astronomer is saying, they couldn't be referred to as sheep. Why? Because aliens are different than human beings. They would have to see, there's, there's another flock of wolves not of this fold that I must go to. He didn't say that. He said they're sheep. They're all humans. They're all the same. They're just a different fold. Humanity has a common source, Adam and Eve. Okay? So, hopefully I've made that point abundantly clear. I mean, I mean this guy it, it has such a warped, perverted understanding of the word of God. It's scary. Anyway, then this um, guy C then writes, perhaps it's not so far-fetched to see the second person of the Trinity, the Word, who was present in the beginning, that's Jesus Christ, Okay, who we're in reference to here. Um, see John 1.1. 1, 1. Says perhaps it's, he says it, perhaps it's not so far fetched to see the second person of the Trinity, the Word or Jesus Christ, who was present in the beginning, coming to lay down his life and take it up again, not only as the Son of Man, but also as a child of other races. What? So then the question is posed. So do the Vatican scholars actually believe Jesus might have been a star child? Or, an alien, or of an alien race? This is what this guy's saying. This astronomer. Now, if he's saying it now, when nothing has happened, we haven't had the big debut of, of the Ascended Masters yet. We haven't had the, the UFOs over every city like so many Hollywood and sci-fi shows are saying what's coming. We haven't had that. We haven't had all the miracles and signs and line wonders. If he's saying that now, what is he preparing those that he's going to influence for. He's saying he might not just be the son of man, but also a child of other races. Hmm. So do the Vatican scholars actually believe Jesus might have been a star child? Or an alien race? Now, if you don't know what that is, key in, I don't know, indigo, star child, whatever. I did a whole teaching on those. Okay. Then it goes on to say, does Guy C. and other Jesuits secretly hold that the virgin birth was really an abduction scenario in which Mary was impregnated by an extraterrestrial, giving birth to a hybrid Jesus? This is what they're, they're implying here. If that was the case, then it would fit perfectly into the scenario I just presented when they make their big debut and the Ascended Masters come and they say, listen, we're your saviors, and here's Jesus, he's with us. He's actually not fully human, and that's how he was able to do all those miracles, because he wasn't fully human. He's one of us, he's on our team. But you guys have it all messed up with your Bible, particularly the King James Bible. 
And we need to rewrite the Gospels so that you can get it all straight and figured out. Because we're your buddies and we're your pals. And, you know, you better bow down and worship us. And admit that we're your saviors or there could be consequences. <laughs> That's how it's going to probably go down. Something to that along those lines. So as incredible as this sounds, you should prepare for the unexpected answer as this series unfolds. All of this would seem... In, in, now, again, and there, they're going, they're, they're exposing what they're saying. So I appreciate Tom Horn saying that. Okay? Again, a lot of mixed stuff when I read his reports. That's why I'm here, to try to say, okay, listen, here's something he said that was good. Here's something he said that he needs to really like clarify. And why are we so fixated on the Catholic Church? Why does it have to be that way? On their ancient prophecies, on their supposed ancient... These are guys that are all burning in hell. Why do I want to go to them for my prophetic... Um, for the completion of any prophetic thing that I need to know? All I need is the Word of God. I don't need to go outside the, wor the Word of God to some Catholic prophecy to make my life complete as a Christian. That's my big beef with Tom Horn, okay? But I do like what he said here. Because he's pointing out, like, listen, uh, what are you saying here? So, all of this would seem an impossible theology if not for the fact that other high-ranking Vatican spokespersons who routinely study from Mount Graham have been saying the same in recent years. This includes Dr. Christopher Carbali, Vice Director of the Vatican Observatory Research Group at Mount Graham until, 19, until 2012, who believes our image of God will have to change if disclosure of alien life is soon revealed by scientists, including the need to evolve from the concept of an anthropocentric God into a broader entity. Okay, so that word, when it says... Evolving from the concept of an anthropocentric God into a broader entity. The word anthropomorphic essentially means having human form or characteristics. Uh, again, we are created in God's image. Okay, I think that's where we get this whole anthropocentric God into a broader entity. What does that broader entity mean? Well, alien. Large gray alien. One of these ascended masters calls himself Hanton. H-A-T-T-O-N. He calls himself creator god of the universe. I'm not making this stuff up. Talk about an ego. These guys have no shortages on, shortages on ego. In the last ten years, he finally came out and admitted, though, in his true form, although he will present himself as a Adonis-like ascended master, in his true form, you know what he is? What he's openly admitted to? A large, gray alien. This, that is exactly what I'm talking about. This statement that this vice director of the Vatican Observatory Research on Mount Graham until 2012, Dr. Christopher Carbali, who's saying, who believes our image of God will have to change if disclosure of alien life is soon revealed by scientists including the need to evolve from the concept of an anthropocentric God, meaning a God created in, like, we're created in God's image. Okay. Into a broader entity. What would a broader entity be? A, a large gray alien, for starters. <laughs> this is why the Bible says to build your house on the solid rock of Christ Jesus. And when the winds come and the waves come and these types of things, you're not going to be moved. Because what is coming is going to be so unbelievably powerfully deceptive. If you're not firmly rooted on the solid rock of Christ Jesus, you're, you're going down. This is why God said, and in specifically in regard to the time that we're living in, right as the Antichrist is being revealed and the falling away of the church is happening in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that God shall send them strong delusion, that they will believe a lie, that they might all be damned to receive not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's what where we're at, and that's what's coming. And it's going to be the slickest, biggest deception humanity has ever known. And most of the church is just totally asleep, at least in America. The 501c3 corporate church, controlled by the corporate pastors, yoked up with the government in every way, shape, and form, they're totally asleep. 
They're not, they're not being educated on what's coming. This is why the Bible says, you know, my children are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And then it goes on to say, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee and thy children, and thou shalt be a priest to me no more. We gotta be careful what knowledge we're rejecting. This is what they're saying. This is what the people that are going to implement the New World Order and the coming One World Religion are saying. The Vatican is at the spear tip. They know what they're talking about. They know what they've seen with their telescopes. They know what they're preparing for. This is an age-old plan going back since when the, the book of Revelation was written. Remember, like I said, God stands outside of time. He can look into time. He can see the beginning from the end. And if if the devil has access to heaven, most likely he has some foreknowledge of, of coming events as well, if not a total foreknowledge. He knows he's a defeated foe. But he still wants to take as many people ultimately into the lake of fire as possible. This is what this is all about. And this is the deception that's coming. Whereby we need to be prepared. And very, very few Christians know this information. They, they were just... There's very few. So, going further. My comment. Oh. Anthropocentric also means considering human beings as the most significant entities in the universe. That would be another... Um, In other words, when these dudes make their big debut, they're going to say, you humans, you're so prideful and arrogant. You think you're the only, you think there's no greater created beings in the universe than you? Well, if we're created in God's image, I mean, I know the Bible talks about he created us a little lower than the angels, the good angels, okay, But these are going to be fallen angels saying this stuff to us. We're going to have fallen angels putting humanity on a collective guilt trip. Saying, you arrogant. Don't you understand we created you? We seeded this planet with life millions of years ago? You've messed everything up? But we're going to give you a break and you just fall down and worship us. And you know what? We're going to show you how to attain your next level in evolution. We're going to take you from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. We're going to take you into the grand new world order. Yeah, you're going to have to worship the false beast and, and or the false prophet and the and the antichrist. And yeah, you're going to have to take a mark in your right hand, your forehead, or, or you're going to get beheaded. But you know, hey, those are the that's the price you're going to have to pay. So the current Vatican Observatory Director, Father Jose Funes, has gone equally as far, suggesting that alien life not only exists in the universe. But, and is our brother, so alien, he says alien life not only exists in the universe, and is our brother, these alien life's our brother, but will when manifested confirm the true faith of Christianity and the dominion of Rome. Boy, that was a whopper and a mouthful there. So alien life exists in the universe, there are brothers, and when they manifest, they're going to confirm the true faith of Christianity. They're going to give us a rewriting of the Gospels. And then that's also going to point toward Rome, because you have to figure, Rome's going to say, hey, listen, we knew this the whole time, but we're so holy, we're so pure, we're so righteous, even though we have allegiance of pedophile priests here to prove that to you. Um, And all of the atrocities throughout the years and the millions killed during the Inquisition and all of the wicked, corrupt garbage that goes on in the Catholic Church every day. Other than that, We've known about this for a long time, but we just knew you little peons couldn't handle it until the big debut of, you know, Mr. Space Alien guy over here. This is what they're going to, this is the garbage they're going to be shoving down, collectively down humanity's throat. And ultimately, because the Vatican has chosen to do business with Lucifer and Satan and serve him, think how many billions of souls they've taken to hell. One of the perks of that is going to be this new ascended master, false prophet, antichrist, supposedly saying and confirming the dominion of Rome. For a time. For a time. That's going to be one of the perks. 
So, when the La Observatoria Romano newspaper, which publishes nothing that the Vatican doesn't approve, asked him what this all meant, these statements I just said, he replied, quote, How can we rule out that life may have developed elsewhere? Just as we consider earthly creatures as a brother and sister, why should we not talk about our extraterrestrial brothers? It would still be part of creation, after all. And believing in such existence is such is not contrary to the Catholic doctrine. Well, maybe it's not contrary to the Catholic doctrine. It's false, paganistic doctrine. Ungodly, leavened. So they're saying right here, they're, they're extraterrestrial brothers and sisters. So now, I give you several teachings where I've actually discovered, went into this in detail. Um, I mentioned them before, but they're all here on page four. Or five after I get the table of contents put in. Vatican easing humanity toward alien disclosure. You can click on it. Satan's agenda for disclosure, parts one through six. Okay, so I've gotten into this in depth. Also, Mars, Lord Maitreya, and the Ascended Master in Strong Delusion. Then I did several current event studies where I've covered these things. Uh, then I did one, um, on, uh, several on the Catholic Church here, and then one on Lord Betraya, uh should say, Devil Betraya. But anyway. So, going further, here is a picture of Brother. He, and again, why does Tom Horn call him Brother? He's not my brother in Christ. He refers to the Catholic Church like they're our brothers and sisters. They are not our brothers and sisters in Christ. They are trusting in a devil death cult that has the blood of millions of true Bible-believing Christian martyrs on its hands and an and a absolute total legions throughout the ages of pedophile priests. And that's just naming a couple of their atrocities, not to mention idol worship and every other wicked thing you could conjure in your head. He refers to him as brother, Guy C. With Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, the him. I mean, this guy has got an absolute total access to the Pope. Or I know he's stepped down or whatever, but he's not my brother. So such statements are, but the latest in a string of recent comments by numerous Vatican astronomers gro- confirming a growing belief or inside knowledge that disclosure will be made in the near future of alien life including intelligent life, and that this encounter will not challenge the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. See, the Roman Catholic Church isn't worried about this because it's not going to challenge their authority. They're going to be pointing people... I think there's going to be a trade-off here. They're going to point people to the Antichrist and false prophet, these ascended masters. And they're going to say, we knew about it, but we knew he couldn't handle it, and now's the right time, and we're going to be like basically the liaison... We're going to be the goodwill ambassadors from the Antichrist and false prophet to you, humanity, particularly to the Catholic Church, and then to the other supposed Christian denominations. Because we've chosen ahead of time and made a deal with Satan regarding this, this isn't going to challenge the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church has served Satan oh so well, and they'll be rewarded for a time Because of that, might be a very short time, I don't know. But initially, in order to grease the skids for this whole transition of people coming under the one world system of Antichrist, false prophet, one world political system, one world economic system, one world monetary system, and one world religion, in order to grease that skid and to make that happen smoother, the Catholic Church is the ideal vehicle for that. From the 70s through the 90s, it is Monsignor Cordalo Balducci, an exorcist theologian and member of the Vatican Cura, or the governing body of Rome, and a friend of the Pope, who perhaps went the furthest, appearing on Italian national television numerous times to state that the ETs, meaning extraterrestrials, were not only possible, but already interacting with the Earth, and that the Vatican's leaders were aware of it. Furthermore, speaking as an official demonologist, he said that extraterrestrial encounters are not demonic. They are not due to physiological impairment, and they are not the case of an earthly 
of an entity attachment. But these encounters deserve to be studied carefully. They're not demonic. Oh, really? Wow. I guess all of the millions of people that have been able to recall abduction scenarios, and it numbers into the multi-millions worldwide, 2-3% to of the population conservatively, at least in America, and I believe also elsewhere, when privately polled, say that they've been abducted. That goes into the millions upon millions. Are they all nuts? And these aren't people that are coming out bragging about it. These are people that are ashamed of it. But when polled privately, they'll admit to it. Some. Who knows? It might be much higher. But they're not demonic. Even though when these people are actually allowed or have recall of these events, it's typically the most horrific possible thing you could ever imagine on the planet. It's a little slice of hell carved out. These people are probed, prodded, cut open, tortured. I mean, you you, you can't even imagine. I think a good example would be that scene from Fire in the Sky. Key that one in. Abduction, alien abduction scene. What they do to that guy. That's pretty representative of the terror and evil. And these things are always proclaiming, I am God. And always trying and fixated on disproving Jesus Christ. And always fixated on giving the people they abduct another gospel. They're also very, very fixated on their reproductive systems. Extracting eggs from women, semen from men, these types of things. What are they doing with that? We're going to talk about that more later. Millions upon millions upon millions of these people. You know the only way to stop an abduction scenario? It's been proven. Now, I believe this has to have faith behind it. Crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that stops it. Over and over and over and over again, there have been cases who have done this. I, I, I had it happen to me. I, I wasn't abducted, but I had the angel of death at the foot of my bed. If you don't believe it, key in supernatural in the keyword search box. Hear my testimony on it. One word out of my mouth dispatched everything. And I'm telling you, they were there to kill me that day. They were there to kill me. If I've ever anything's ever happened in my life and I know the devil was trying to kill me, that was the day. One word out of my mouth, Jesus, and they were gone. Instantly, as though it never happened. Now, I don't believe a New Ager crying out to Sananda Jesus is going to do anything. There's no faith behind that. He doesn't even know who Jesus is. I'm talking crying out to Jesus with faith. Over and over and over, it has been documented that alien abduction scenarios have been thwarted by crying out to Jesus. It's like throwing Hot battery acid on those little maggot devils when they try to come for you. Over and over. Where? CE4 Research. Key that in. CE4 Research. They've got, I believe, hundreds of testimonies. You know what's so amazing to me? These people that get reoccurring abducted, I've tried to reach out to a couple of them. They don't want to hear it. If it has to do with Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ of the Bible, they would rather continue to get abducted the vast majority of the time than ever, ever consider the possibility of getting saved. Because that's what it really boils down to. An unsaved person is, is, I'm not saying that God couldn't stop an abduction scenario in order to bring you to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But most of the time, these people, oh, they just suffer and suffer and suffer. And it's like, it's so simple. It is so unbelievably simple how to stop these things. Cry out to the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Easy. Problem solved. But very, very few people will ever do it. It's really sickeningly sad that they won't because the answer is so simple and easy. Anyway, um, I wanted to throw that in there because that's very important for a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what I just said. 
So, going further. Remember, CE4 research. Um, going further. But this, this devil, Monsignor Corrado Balducci, has the absolute audacity to say that extraterrestrial encounters are not demonic. That just goes to show you how evil they are, that they would utter such a thing. Then it goes on to say, he even disclosed how the Vatican itself has been closely following this phenomenon and quietly compiling material evidence from the Vatican embassies from around the world on the extraterrestrials and their mission. For example, at a forum concerning the enormous UFO flap in Mexico, he stated, quote, I always wish to be the spokesperson for these star people. This is the aliens. Who are all, who also are part of God's glory. What? And I will continue to bring it to the attention of the Holy Mother Church. End of quote. This guy wants to be the spokesperson for Satan. And his fallen angels and demons and devils manifesting in this fake alien form to try to convince everybody they're from some galaxy millions of billions of years away, and they're just coming back to police their little science project. And maybe he will be the spokesperson. You know. And they're part of God's glory. Oh, that's why they're pointing people away from the word of God, away from Jesus Christ. They're torturing and committing the worst atrocities that you could possibly ever imagine when these people get abducted because they're part of God's glory. A tree is known by its fruit. There's nothing but wicked and evil that comes from this UFO garbage. Nothing but wickedness and evil. Well, what about the Nordics? They always come as so nice because there's different ways they come. Blonde hair, blue eyes, just perfectly looking. Humanoid people. And sometimes they will come under that veneer. True. True. But their gospel is always false. It's, just, it's still the same. It's still pointing you away from the word of God. They want to see you burn in hell. And then get thrown into a lake of fire. Because they're of the father of the devil. And of his lust they will do. So whether they come as a beautiful angel of light. When the Bible says it's no marvel. If Satan can come as an angel of light, that his ministers, meaning like these star people or these Nordics, can come as ministers of righteousness. And here's the whole thing. The good cop, bad cop, alien scenario. We're the good aliens. We're here to help humanity progress beyond its, its current um, restrictions and to take you to the next level. To take you from the age of Aquarius into, or the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And to make your next step in the evolutionary, so you can become as gods. Which is the same thing the serpent promised Eve in Genesis 3, in the Garden of Eden. Same old trick, same old lie. And then there's the bad aliens. The reptilians, and typically the greys. Who we fight against. And, again, good cop, bad cop. The Hegelian dialectic. Democrat, Republican. Coke, Pepsi. They've got the whole thing going on in the alien thing because that is part of Satan's plan. You get on one side, he still controls both sides. He still gets you to where he wants you to be. Ultimately. That's why that's created. God is not the author of confusion. Okay? So, I wanted to throw that in as well. Going further, it says, Whatever you make of his claims, Balducci was a member of the special group of consultants to the Vatican and a public spokesperson for Rome on the matter of extraterrestrial life, as well as UFO and abduction phenomenon, and his assertions have never been contradicted by the church. So understand, when this guy says he wants to be a spokesman for the star people, and they're part of God's glory, and that he said that extraterrestrial encounters are not demonic. He is a spokesperson for the, for the unholy Roman Catholic death cult church. And his assertions have never been refuted by the unholy death cult Roman Catholic church. Meaning they stand behind what he's saying. Still, perhaps the most intriguing was Catholic theologian, uh, Father Ma- Malachi Martin, 
the Bible says, call no man father but your father in heaven, but, you know, uh, who, his death in 1999 hinted at something like an imminent extraterrestrial contact more than once. While on Coast to Coast AM radio in 1997, Art Bell asked Malachi Martin why the Vatican was heavily invested in the study of deep space at Mount Graham Observatory we visited. As a retired professor, Professor of Pontifical Biblical Institute, Martin was uniquely qualified to hold in hold in secret information pertaining to this VAT telescope. Martin answer, Martin's answer ignited a firestorm of interest among Christian and secular UFOologists when he replied, quote, Because the mentality amongst those who are at the highest levels of the Vatican administration in geopolitics know what is going on in space, and what is approaching us could be of greater import in the next five years or ten years. So, he was basically saying that the Vatican knows what's going on in space and what is approaching us. Hmm, that's weird. Maybe that's why they've got all these whiz-bang telescopes that can see things other telescopes can't see, because they know what's actually approaching us. Huh. And then he said, could be of great import or importance in the next five or ten years. Now, he died, this was in 1997. A little bit off on the timeline there, but... Because we're already past ten years. Yet, if the ET life of something the Vatican officials have privately considered for some time, why are they speaking so openly about it now? In what some perceive as a careful doctrinal unveiling over the last few years. And they have really stepped it up on their rhetoric regarding the subject. Is this a deliberate effort by the Catholic death, death cult officials to warm up the laity to ET disclosure? Absolutely. Are official church publications on the subject an attempt to soften the blow before disclosure arrives? Absolutely. You don't want to just throw this on somebody when they haven't been prepared at all. Of course, Hollywood's doing a good job of preparing everybody. In order to help the faithful retain their orthodoxy in light of the unprecedented forthcoming knowledge. So, faithful. Yeah, faithful to a death cult. Writing for Newsweek on Thursday, May 15th, 2008, the, the, uh, the Vatican... In the article, The Vatican and the Little Green Men, Sharon Begley noted, quote, that this might be part of a push to demonstrate the Vatican's embrace of science. Interestingly, the Vatican has plans to host a conference in Rome next spring to mark the 150th anniversary of the origin of the species by Charles Darwin. Why doesn't that surprise me that the devil Catholic death cult is going to actually have 150th anniversary of the origin of species that promotes evolution, which has taken millions upon millions upon millions of people to hell because you cannot believe in evolution and believe in the Word of God. They're totally contradictory. It's what Hitler based his whole eugenics program on and how he justified killing millions and millions of Jews and other races who were deemed un- inferior because they weren't as far along on the evolutionary chart as others. They have the audacity, this devil death cult called Catholicism, to actually have a 150th anniversary of the origin of species. Charles Darwin's seminal work on the theory of evolution, which has been debunked and disproven so many different ways I I wouldn't even know where to begin. Conference organizers say it will look beyond entrenched ideological positions, including misconstrued creationism, Oh, good, so they're going to debunk creationism, too. Well, they're a tool of Satan, so you should expect that. The Vatican says it... See, this is what I wish Tom Horn would say. I mean, you know, I wish he'd just come out and say this. These, these people are, are evil. This, this death cult is evil, I should say. Their whole agenda is taking people to hell in mass, and they've done it. And why can't we just come out and say that? Instead of... of you know, tiptoeing around and acting like there are brothers and sisters in Christ, which they're not as a born-again Bible-believing Christian. They're on their way to hell. If you really care about them, you're going to tell them the truth. Now, whether they want to receive the truth or not, that's between them and God. But placating them and saying, oh yeah, you're part of the body of Christ and you're going to heaven just like us, and then they plunge into hell, what good have you done them? All you've done is lie to them. 
when maybe you could have been the reason that they weren't in hell because you give them the truth. It goes on to say the Vatican says it wants to reconsider the problem of evolution with a broader perspective and says an appropriate consideration is needed more than ever before. Oh, good, Vatican. I'm so. And see how they're going to do this? Is they're going to say, you, you know, actually, evolution is true because these ascended masters who we've been working with behind the scenes for a long time, they created us, and Jesus is one of them, and they created us a long time. Actually, they seeded humanity here on Earth millions of years ago. Just go to Mission from Mars, last scene. Okay, key it on YouTube if you don't believe this. This is what, this is the ancient astronaut theory. And yes, we did evolve, and, 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 and we are, we're, we're actually right now ready to take our, our actual step, next step of evolution into Godhood. But we're going to need the Ascended Masters who created us in order to do that. So it's coming. The appropriate consideration Begley mentioned may have been something alluding to by Guy C. three years earlier in an interview with the Sunday Herald. That article pointed out how Guy C.'s job included reconciling the wildest reaches of science fiction with the flint-eyed dogma of the unholy sea. I put in the unholy. And... That is the latest mental meander, and that and that his latest mental meander was about the quote Jesus seed, described as a brain warping theory, which speculates that perhaps every planet that harbors intelligent, self aware life may have also had a Christ walk across its methane seas, just as Jesus did here on Earth in Galilee. The salvation of the Betelgeusians, meaning the, the ones that live uh, near the star of Betelgeuse, which is a real star. The salvation of the Betelgeusians may have happened simultaneously with the salvation of earthlings. So see, Jesus Christ died on the cross all over the universe on all these different planets simultaneously to pay their sin debt as well. And these are just, we're just reconciling our different races, and some are more advanced than others, and we're kind of on the low man on the totem pole, even though we were created in God's image. And we need to just accept this heretical garbage from the pit of hell. But when they come with all lying signs and wonders and miracles and all the stuff that's going to be going on to deceive and delude the planet, and that's not even mentioning all the devils and demons that are going to be inflicting people's minds, though, and you don't even see that, oh, it's going to be impressive. This sounds like a sanctified version of panspermia, the idea that life on Earth was seeded, again, ancient astronaut theory, by something a long time ago. But in this case, the seed was divinely appointed and then reconciled to Christ. The curious connection between the Vatican spokespersons and the question of extraterrestrials and salvation was further hinted at in the May 2008 Law Observatory Romano interview with Father Funes titled, The Extraterrestrial is My Brother in which the English translation of the Italian feature, Funes responded to the question of whether extraterrestrials would need to be redeemed, which he believes should not be assumed. If He says, quote, if other intelligence beings existed, it is not said that they would have need of redemption. They could remain in full fr- friendship with their creator. Maybe they have a different creator. Why would they need redeemed? So this is the wild, satanic speculation of all these high-level, satanic, false, Catholic church, unholy fathers that we're hearing here. Wild, unbiblical, off-the-wall, demonic, satanic speculation. You know, maybe this is what they feel in their heart. While the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? That's what the Bible says about the heart. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. This is all we're getting. Nothing based on the word of God. But then again, when did the Catholic Church ever base anything on the word of God, really? (laughs) Everything's a perversion. So, by full friendship... Foons reflected how some Vatican theologians accept the possibility that an extraterrestrial species may exist that is morally superior to men, closer to God than we human, we fallen humans are. Oh yeah, is that why 
when all these people end up getting abducted, all these horrific, terrible things always happen, and they always point people away to another gospel and away from Jesus Christ because they're morally superior to us? (laughs) Why they always put these people through the most horrific torture that you could possibly even envision in your head? Because they're morally superior. Makes sense to me. You know, where do I sign up? (laughs) Let me read this. Let me read the full quote. So, how some Vatican theologians accept the possibility that an extraterrestrial species may exist that is morally superior to men, closer to God than we fallen humans are. And that, as a consequence, they may come here to evangelize us. I wonder if this could be another gospel. And the Bible's very clear. Although we or an angel from heaven preach another gospel, and they're going to come like angels in heaven. They're basically going to at least appear on that level. No, probably a lot higher. No, we're gods. We created you. But if they preach another gospel, the Bible says, let them be accursed. That's how you know when to either accept it or reject it. Is it another gospel? And you know this is nothing but another gospel we're talking about here. Father Guy C. took up this same line of thinking when he wrote in the book, Brother Astronomer, Adventures of a Vatican Scientist. So the question of whether or not one should evangelize is really a moot point. Any alien we find will learn and change from contact with us. Now this is from this guy C. Just as we learn and change from contact with them. It's inevitable. And they'll be evangelizing us too. Good, so we can get more leaven in the already leavened doctrines of the world religion. More false doctrine. Yay, more false doctrine. They'll be evangelizing us too. Oh, you better believe it. This is going to be the ultimate another gospel. <laughs> but And the Catholic Church has no problem with any of this. None. They're waiting with open arms. They're going to be the goodwill ambassadors between humanity and the fallen, um, these fallen angels. Isn't that nice? But hold on, as disturbing as this rabbit, as this is, this rabbit hole goes much deeper. In the paper for Interdisciplinary Encyclopedia of Religion and Science, Father Giuseppe Tanzella Nitti, the Opus Dei theologian and Pontifical University of Unholy Roman Cross in Rome, Unholy Cross in Rome, explains just how we could actually be evangelized during contact with spiritual aliens. As every believer in God would, he argues, greet an extraterrestrial civilization as an, extra nor- ex- as an extraordinary experience and would be inclined to respect the alien and to recognize the common origin of our different species as origi- originating from the same creator. Well, all things are made by him and without him was not anything made that was made, Jesus Christ, but the good angels, as they were created as good, fell. They've willingly and openly walked away from God and are separated from God. And because of they're so separated, the longer they're separated, just the more evil they become. Don't put words in my mouth, devil boy, and say, as every believer in God would, he argues, greet an extraterrestrial civilization as an extraordinary experience. And we'd be inclined to respect the alien and recognize the common origin. <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth, devil boy. Because I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna greet them. I'll greet them with the word of God. Cast them right into, into the abyss. These devils from the pits of hell. This is why the Bible says, put on the full armor of God. I'm going to get into that later. Very, very important that we do this. I'm over time on this part, but I really want to get through this part because I want to keep these parts connected in the study. Um, So I'm going to try to get through this next part here, even though we're going to be over time here. So sorry if you're burning this on a DVD or a CD player. Um, Going further, according to to Giuseppe, this contact by non-terrestrial... Intelligence would offer new possibilities of better understanding the relationship between God and the whole creation. No, it's not. All it's going to do is deceive you and delude you. All we need is the word of God, and God is not the author of confusion. All these things are going to be here to do is to confuse you. 
and to get you away from the Lord Jesus Christ and away from his word. That's, that's, that's their whole agenda. Giuseppe states that this would not immediately oblige the Christian to, and again, we've already read this quote, but to renounce his own faith in God simply on the basis of a new reception of new unexpected information of a religious character from extraterrestrial civilizations. But that such a renunciation could come soon after as the new religious content originating from outside the earth is confirmed as reasonable and credible. Very similar to the quote I read earlier. Once the trustworthiness of this information has been verified, the believer would have to reconcile such new information with the truth that he or she already knows. No, I don't. I don't need to reconcile none of it. All I need is the Word of God. That's it. I don't have to reconcile nothing. And then it goes on to say, and then believes on the basis of the the revelation of the one and triune God conducting a rereading of the gospel inclusive of the new data. This is what they want you to believe, but it's a lie. That high-ranking spokesperson for the Vatican have, in recent years, increasingly offered such language acknowledging the likelihood of extraterrestrial intelligence and the dramatic role E.T.'s introduction to human civilization could play in regard to altering established creeds about anthropology, philosophy, religion, and redemption is set to become more future consequential than most are prepared for. See, I'm not just doing this study today for like, so everybody can be entertained. This is pretty much entertaining study, I think, as far as the information goes. But this is going to be a reality, probably sooner than we really know. Some form of deception along these lines are going to happen eventually. Contrary to what the corporate 501c3 lukewarm, totally asleep church is telling its masses, in general, not everybody, but in general. We're going to have to deal with this. And the thing is, is if there's very few Christians that know this, and this stuff starts to go down, other Christians that don't know this are going to need to be educated. If you're up on this information, and particularly if you have some of this saved, like if you were to save the PDF for this teaching, or if you get one of the flash drives at ContendingForTruth.com, all my PDFs are saved on them. You could literally take them back and say, hey, listen, look. This guy, Scott Johnson, put this together a long time ago, before this was ever announced. He said this was going to happen. How can you say that he's a fraud if he said it Years before it ever going to happen. And then it happened. And they said they were going to try to deceive us this way. And look, it's happening. You could point a Christian or a potential Christian who might be on the verge. They're like confused. Oh, are these aliens real? Or, or is Jesus Christ? You know, people are going to be really searching for answers. Some. Some are just going to fall headlong into it. Most will. I, I hate to say that. And that's part of the strong delusion that God is sending. I hate to say it. But some, I believe you'll be able to pull out of the fire. And I mean that literally, basically, because that's where they're going if they follow this garbage. So that's why I'm doing this, so that we're equipped for the future. So that our faith is not even remotely shaken. All it is, all it is, hey, this is exactly confirmation of what I believe was coming, and now it's happening. This isn't shaking my faith, it's only increasing it. It's only lining up with the Word of God. It's only telling me what the Word of God says as far as strong delusion that's coming. And a lot of other verses you could cite. So, and then there's the Lucifer device at Mount Graham, this telescope, which the Vatican denies being connected to, but we shall illustrate otherwise later. And how can they deny being connected to it? they got Jesuits operating it. <laughs> Yo, we're really not connected, Jimmy. Well, it's just kind of here, by accident. It just showed up one day. The Lucifer telescope just kind of walked up the mountain and just kind of planted itself right here. And us Jesuit Lucifer dudes, we don't know what's going on, but we like it, and he's our buddy, and he's kind of cool, and he's our friend, so we decided to let it stay. We feed it, we water it every day, we take it out and let it, give it a walk, to do its business, you know. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> we, we, we were really not connected with it. 
Oh, okay, right. So anyway, Lucifer is curiously described on the Vatican Observatory website as NASA and the Vatican's infrared telescope called Lucifer. A German-built NASA and the Vatican owned and funded the infrared telescope. And it's actually, now this is what they have on their own website. The Vatican Observatory's website said, said all this about the Lucifer telescope. And what is its purpose? It's looking for Nibiru and Nemesis. Why has the Vatican Observatory website allowed that caption to remain? Nibiru and Nemesis are hypothetical planets that supposedly return in orbit close to the Earth after very long periods of time. This is the whole 10th planet, Planet X, Nibiru, Wormwood deal that I've done some teachings on and I post here. Okay? They have been connected in modern myth with Planet X and the most and mostly darkly with the destruction of planets, and some believe occurred during a great war between God and Lucifer when the powerful cherub was cast out of heaven. Are Rome and other world powers using this Lucifer device to observe something the rest of us cannot see? Something they believe represents this ancient war? Or worse, keeping an eye on approaching end times fallen angelic transportation devices like UFO fleets or something Malachi Martin hinted at? I don't know. But I give you my teachings on Wormwood, and there's three of them. And um, you can click on those if you like, here in the PDF. The later theory is interesting in light of the demonic nature of the infrared device. Infrared telescopes can detect objects too cool or far away and faint to be observed in visible light such as distant planets, some nebulae, and brown dwarf stars. Additionally, infrared radiation has longer wavelengths than, vi- invisible, than visible light, which means it can pass through astronomical gas and dust without being scattered. Objects and areas obscured from view in the visible spectrum, including the center of the Milky Way, can thus be observed by Lucifer's infrared technology. But what UFO researchers have fascinated about for some time now is how infrared technology can also be used to spot and track unidentified flying objects in the heavens that cannot be seen with other telescopes or with the naked eye. In fact, some of the most astonishing UFOs ever caught on film have been recorded with infrared. This, what has this to do with the arrival of Petrus Romanus, this final pope, they're saying, and especially the global leader um, he will celebrate is beyond disturbing and ultimately imminent. So, again, that's the end of part two. I'm going to try to go through every part. I think he's ultimately going to have like 20 parts on this. So, a lot of this really ties into other studies I've done. That's why I liked reading through this. I'm just here to kind of give you the whole balanced biblical thing. Okay, let's not get off way off, far off on this glorification of the Catholic Church because they're totally part of the problem. They're totally in on it. As we just proved. I mean, they're beyond going to be part of the end time deception, delusion, apostasy. They're going to be the main players, in fact, from a religious standpoint. I think they're going to be at the spear tip. And we're just going to continue to explore these. So we're going to get part uh, three in a study next, and it's actually part two of this study. So um, I'm going to end part one here, and we'll see you part two. God bless. Scott Johnson's weekly audios are available for free 24-7 on the Internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R-T-R-U-T-H dot com. Please help us continue this work. To support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2nd Line, 450 Conover, C-O-N-O-V-E-R, Boulevard West, number 202, third line, Conover, North Carolina, 28613. Or on the internet, PayPal can be used at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.